Hi guys, Ben Riven here for Card Runners. Um, so this is the second part to the mini series that I started a couple of weeks ago. Um, so last week was on bluffing, um, and today we're going to do a pretty much. It's going to be another hand history review, but we're going to do kind of a random selection of hands. So that'll be there'll be a couple of bluffs in there. There'll be a couple of cool downs there. There'll be there's just going to be a variety of different things. Um, and there's some full rate and some six max today. So hopefully we can get some interesting hands and have a bit of variety as well. Um, so I hope you enjoy and let's get straight on to the first hand. So we've got kings in the big blind and we get an open from this Theo guy. Um, reads on this guy are that he's unbelievably aggressive, he's massively barrel heavy, um, he likes to bluff, he doesn't fall to 3 bets much, he 4 bets a lot. Um, he's just one of those deep table regs that um, I find really really hard to play. Um, as a general I think that playing more passively against, well you can either go either way, you can either kind of rise to their kind of game and play so much more aggressive, but that for me is going to be really really high variance, particularly that I play quite loose already, um, to start playing more aggressively against these like pretty good deep table regs, um, I'd rather play a little bit more passively because I'm playing like 16 games and it's just becomes pretty messy when I'm, I'm like three betting and four betting and flatting four bets um, against these guys with marginal holdings. Um, so I'd say as a whole, I play fairly not tight but more passive against these kind of players than I do against uh, the average hundred big blind reg. Um, so obviously it's going to come around to me, and I'm of course going to three bet one deep. Um, I think my sizing is a little bit small. I could be making this like 22, 24, tw at least 20. I think. Um, but to be fair, we are we're not we're not um, we're not 250 people blinds deep like he is. Like we're like 100, and, what, 170 people, 100, 170 people blinds deep, something like that. Um, so I still prefer going a little bit bigger, but I mean you can't go too far wrong by going this small. Um, and he does make the call. So as I said, he's very very loose. Um, he opens a lot, as you can see, he runs 28, 21. Um, this is a f quite a small sample. Um, so when he does call the three bet. He has a, a massive range of hands. He has, I mean, we can certainly rule out. I think he even four bets tens and jacks pre for value. Um, he may call them as well. He's going to call obviously his ace queen suited, his ace jack suited, pretty much all of his ace sex suited. He's going to call his off suit broadways like king queen, king jack, uh, probably king ten, maybe even jack ten off. Um, I've I've seen people calling like six eight off and stuff. I mean, I I don't believe that's good um, theoretically, but. I mean, they probably have reasons to do it. Maybe they, maybe they know I check fold too much. Maybe they know I give up pots too much and threw up pots. Um, however, it is fair to say that he can have all sets at this stage. He can have eight nines. He can have uh, ace queen suited, backdoor flush draws, pairs and straight draws, all those kind of hands. Um, so as I said before, I know this player raises a lot and he barrels a lot to weakness. So I feel that checking this flop is probably pretty similar to betting I mean if we are betting we're pretty much going to have to go three um, I'm just very aware that if I do check to him he likes to bet um, bottom line so um, I do go ahead and check um, also by checking I can now have loads of other hands I can have like ace highs I can have ace king ace queen I certainly don't want to be um, folding at this stage I may want to see with them but also I may want to be check calling them as well um, also a good good hands to go um, let's say I can have like four or five suited here it'd be another really good hand to check obviously with the nuts um, because for the reasons I gave before this person does like to barrel uh, so I check and he goes uh, $19 into 39 um, I kind of want to continue, I'd say, my story of having a marginal holding. So let's say I had three bet hand like seven nine or something like that, or like ten seven suited, or I know even like uh, can't think about maybe like six nine off or something like that. Maybe just I was trying to three bet garbage because he's got a high fold to three bet in these positions. Um, I just want to be check calling all those hands. Um, so I just go ahead and check call. And the turns a nine, which. Um, I'd say is a better card for his range than it is for ours, um, because now he can have he can have he can have ten eights for a straight. He can have pocket nines for a set. He can have two pair with seven nine, two pair with six nine. Um, of course, he can still have four five for a straight. He can bluff. He can have um, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket threes. Um, also, I feel that again we have to check because 
that it seems kind of it would seem wrong to let's say let's say we did have uh four five for example i wouldn't be wanting to check core flop and betting turn just because this card is a better better card for his range and uh therefore i'd rather let him try bluff us